Hello people, this is Barrett. Today we're going to take a look at what is my Pokemon investing plan for 2024. So, I've seen many people talk about this topic uh, mainly in the first couple of weeks of the year. So, I figured, well, perhaps let's wait, think about it twice, and then put out a video on what I am planning to buy. So, first spoilers, you can see here, Volvo Sky Booster Box. But before we, we jump into what... I am planning to buy. Just a brief introduction if you're new to the channel. I'm better from Better Collector, obviously. And as you can see, I like to be focusing on the differences between the European and the American market. I do so by looking at what happens in the US with this G player and, and then in the EU with the car market. As well as I do share my experience being an European Pokemon collector investor as well as Yu-Gi-Oh. So I do share with you guys what are the differences and I also try to grow a community for both Europeans and American in my Discord. As you can see, we do have EU chat, Pokemon chat, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So if you're European and you've been looking for a place to talk with fellow Europeans, hopefully your search is over. And if you're American and you want to know more about the European market, as well as there's other US guys in here, then you're more than welcome to join. So back to the video, first thing first, Evolving Skies. So, Long story short is, I did have an Evolving Sky booster box back in uh, about a year or so ago, which I traded it towards a, it was a partial trade with a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Now, I initially bought it at 220 euros and then uh, trade value was $400. And right now what I mainly want to do is get an Evolving Skies and a Lost Origin booster box and uh, I am offering for trade a PSA 9 Giratina V, the old R, the chase car from Lost Origin, as well as also PSA 9 Rayquaza V Max from Evolving Skies, also the, the old R. So, I, I mean, I'll pop them up in the screen. And uh, if any of you is interested in such trade, which I think is pretty much fair in value, especially if you are in the EU, then um, just hit me up. Um, you can. Easily join the Discord, we can talk there, and I'm happy to strike a deal. Nevertheless, I am planning to get um, an Evolving Sky Booster Box, mainly because I've been thinking about it, and um, the reason why I wanted to get it is, well, first of all, what I like to do when I'm before I get into product, into position, is what's the downside risk. Now, with Evolving Skies, unlike my, my other sets that I put my money in, it is a much higher risk. Well, if the Pokemon company fails or it happens or something happens, which you could argue, well, better, that's very unlikely. Yes, I do agree, but it's the probability of that happening isn't zero. It is close to zero, but it's not zero. So every time you, you do make a, let's call it investment, there's always some sort of risk. So the thinking is, let's say I buy it for 400 to 450 euros then uh, if this drops back to, I don't know, 200, 100, 150, maybe a huge reprint happens, which again, highly unlikely. I think we all agree with that, but yet possible. And um, I mean, Danny Phantom, shout out to him. I did posted a video of maybe 10 days ago, two weeks back uh, of the, I think it was called the Pokemon reprint window. And I think it was very a very useful tool, very useful video. And very informative as always um, on um, what Pokemon has done in the past. So that kind of shows you that yes, there's we are in a different environment, but uh, it is yet possible. So that's basically the main cons. It's downside risk and uh, something that I really cannot control when it comes to the supply side. When it comes to the demand, then there I'm pretty strong in favor of buying at this price because the thinking was it never really dropped ever since it started to, to take off. It never really dropped. The worst it has done, it's been stable for the past three to six months. And we can kind of see that with TCG player price chart. I mean, if you look at here for from April of last year till what, the end of last year. So it's roughly what, eight months. It's been moving up for about, what, 5%, a bit less than 10%. That to me is really a show, shows genuine growth, healthy growth. And that's why basically I want it. 
I'm looking to buy into it as it seems to be presuming higher and could it drop? Yes, that's basically, I talked about two whole minutes about the cons, that's basically the, the cons of the downside risk I'm concerned doesn't really come from demand rather than supply because again, we, we've seen throughout this move up that demand is there. So I don't really see a huge problem with that. Obviously I'm willing to take a risk, but nevertheless, I think that's something to keep in mind. And then as always, as you like to do here on the channel, and we do monthly update on this, I looked on uh, car market for the current listings available. Now I took out this seller, please tell me about me, but this guy has zero feedback. He has been selling a lot of booster boxes for um, a lot below market price, which doesn't mean it, it, it's a scam, but it, it's usually a bit suspicious. Um, so other than that, I did counted all the boxes available and uh, I think what is mainly interesting is the number of boxes below 500 euros, which I, it's what I believe is kind of the real market price. I mean, I don't see anyone buying above 500 right now. And that comes down to 82 boxes. So if we take a look at our beloved spreadsheet, which again, we update here on the channel every month, we do have 84 below 500 euros. If we take a look at other sets, mainly Chilling Fusion, that came out um, right around the same time frame, time period. Then we see how we have more boxes in Fusion and less in Chilling. However, we, we did mention how in the past month, and you can see that by with the December to January update, Chilling has passed from 69 to 142, and we did say that we saw significant dump into the market, people that were starting to take profits, which very reasonable. If people bought at 90 to 100, even 110, now they want to sell for right around 180 euros, which is roughly market price here in the EU. Yes, it is a bit um, higher than in the US, but if you're familiar with the channel, you should already know by that. If you're not, then hope this brings you some um, informative data. In the EU, boxes tend to be a bit more expensive. There's a bit of a premium, usually around um, 10% more. And um, I mean, yeah, main point is chilling has people have been dumping it. So really supply is right around the same as chilling fusion. But I think many could argue demand is much higher, which again, that's why we see such a price tag. So that being said, there's not much to say about Lost Origin. I'm a, I'm a fan of Lost Origin, despite the fact that I'm trying to trade the, the Tina, but there's a reason for that, that perhaps I'll cover in another video. As well as also, if, if you haven't watched it already, you can see how last week video was a statistical method to try to estimate the fair value of a pack. And we used Lost Origin as an example. So if you haven't watched it, then I highly recommend you do so. You can just skip ahead to the last two to three minutes of the video, no, no big deal. You'll, you'll just see the assumption that I made and then what the eventually final number uh, came out to be. And also I would like you guys to tell me if you like to see different kind of videos, if you'd like me to record myself talking, which I think you guys might appreciate more rather than just listen to a plain website talking. So if that's something you want me to do, you would appreciate, again, let me know down in the comments. I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can arrange something. So that being said, when it comes to Sword and Shield, I'm really not looking for any other boxes. Uh, I'm only missing that I truly want Evolving Skies Lost Origin. I have Fusion, I have Chilling, I have Brilliant, I have Astral, I have Solar Tempest, um, and uh, I don't really plan on getting into the older sets, such as you know Rebel Clash, Sword and Shield Base, um, those two, especially those two. The price is so high just because of supply. There's no supply. And um, I think we all agree the, the demand for both the box and um, mainly the card inside the box. So the card in the set is really not that high as it would be. It is for fusion and chilling and brilliant and so on and so forth. So really of the sold and sheer block, I'm uh, pretty good. I only need Evolving Skies Lost Origin and then um, I'm good. Now, when I come to Scarlet and Violet, um, 
what I accomplished so far. I bought four boxes of Poldini Evolved. And uh, again, I know I'm spending a lot myself. Forgive me. I'm the sponsor of my channel. As we hit 200 subs, thank you very much, guys. Uh, we're already at 214, I think, or 15. Um, but so, truly grateful. Uh, might not be much for uh, for many other YouTubers, but it's, I mean, one step at a time, as I like to say it. So we're planning to do a box break to celebrate, and I'm selling packs at 2 euros each. And as I said, uh, sleep packs on car market, at least at 3 euros. So, um, hope you take advantage of it. If you want more info, if you want to join, just join the Discord and message me. But I think it's, uh, it's, I mean, in my opinion, I'm trying to give back. I know I, unfortunately, I can't give it for free yet, uh, but I'm trying to give you guys the best price that I can. So we both have fun, we both enjoy some time, and I'm trying to also especially do this box breaks for Europeans. As many of you know, most of them are done by Americans, so I'm trying to grow here a little community, which is basically the, the main focus on this channel. But then again, thanks a lot for the 200 subs. Hope, hope we can grow to as many as possible, as quickly as possible, but again, one step at a time. And also, guys, one thing that I would uh, love if you guys could do. So I have to say, I do appreciate you guys watching. If you're if you made this far to the video, thanks a lot. Uh, you're among a small percentage of people that makes it this far. And I would highly appreciate it if you guys could let me know in the comments if you enjoy whatever video you're enjoying. In this case, if you enjoyed this, if you enjoy last week's video, what type of format, if there's any type of video that you would like me to cover. So really just anything in the comments down below because that's the only way I can get feedbacks unless you join the Discord and you tell me on the Discord. So, I mean, I do this video, it's not for me, but for you guys trying to help out and um, if I could get some sort of feedback in any way, uh, I would. it would be very much appreciated. Even just say, I like this, keep doing it, or I don't like that, um, why don't you do this or that, so on and so forth. So again, asking you guys for a favor. I already appreciate you guys watching, but uh, if you guys could uh, leave a comment on what you like, what you don't like, what you would like to see, and so on and so forth, it would be very much appreciated. Now, moving on to Scarlet and Violet. As I said, I do have our boxes of Poldi Evolved and uh, plan to break on one because I do think as main sets, Poldi Evolved is the strongest among everything that has come out so far from an investing slash collecting point of view. And then I'm pretty excited for this guy here, which you guys probably already could tell at the beginning of this video, Temporal Forces, mainly because I'm a black and white kid. I grew up in the black and white era. I mean, I was that's the era I remember the most. I do have a black and white era collection, which if you guys want to see, let me know. I could make a video on it. Um, it's not crazy, but it's it's a pretty cool card. We know black and white era was basically lowest demand era ever to exist, but I'm pretty excited. Um, these are illustration rare if you haven't already watched them. Great artworks as always, but obviously I'm more excited about the, I call them the remake of um, Verizon, Kabalian, Terrakian, um, Antei, Sikin, and Raku in the ancient format. And I mean, these illustration rares, if if I was a single collector, I would get them. I might even get them if prices are affordable, which I think they'll be. They tend to be not too expensive. So it, it'll be interesting to see how much these guys settle for, but I did see people not being too interested in the set as they didn't really like the black and white era, but I'm wondering if it's going to be bad memories for kids like me who grew up with that era, who remember it, and uh, I mean, not only you have the nostalgia factor, but I do think these are just amazing artwork as we've seen throughout the Scarlet and Violet era. And then we have a supporter. We, we do have Gengar here as well as on the full art, which is going to be interesting, I guess. I mean, I wonder if we'll get an SIR Gengar, which I, I think many people are debating on. But nonetheless, main point was that I am going to buy Temporal Forces. Not sure how much I'll buy. Maybe I'll start with two boxes and then I'll see. But um, I think this is going to be good. It might even be the best set of Scarlet and Violet so far when it comes to main sets. But I guess we'll, we'll find out. But uh, I have to say, I, I'm. 
I would consider it the best set over Scott and Valeria so far, but time will tell. So that's kind of it. The only other thing I could do is try to get more fusion, chilling, and brilliant, and maybe astral as well. If I can get it cheap, mainly at some sort of card show or something, so in person deal, so that I can save on shipping as well as negotiating price, that would be nice. But other than that, I'm not really planning on buying any anything else. I'll, I'll see what Scarlet and Violet Era will serve for 2024 and see what's going to happen. Now, the last thing I'll say in today's video is that I know, and you should know too, that Scarlet and Violet sets are, if they are going to appreciate, which is obviously the whole reason why we, at least I am buying them, it's going to take time. It's going to take at least two to three years. So the reason the main reason why I'm buying them is that I can get them for cheap. Right now I can get them for a lot cheaper than what I can get any Sword and Shield era set. So the fact that I can get them at a price point which has little to no downside risk makes me comfortable. I know it's going to take time, but I'm comfortable at what I'm buying them at. So again, if you enjoy what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. I would highly appreciate it if you could let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed the video what are your buys for 2024 as well as what is any suggestion that you might have for the channel thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one